Welcome back everybody, this is Jason Seacrest and we are going to go through another step-by-step -step Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Now on the last video we just published, we actually started off our new series called Drawing for Illustrator. And before you guys get too hung up on the fact that we trace the image, there are going to be different people that are at different levels. And not every single person is going to definitely want to uh, free draw or hand draw everything. So we're going to give you different approaches to drawings. And at the end of the last video, this is where we left off. I have already created my template layer and I have already created a layer above it, which I am ready to build on. So it's going to be a little bit of a faster process since we are ready to go. So I'm going to hide this. We are going to be dealing with the pencil tool today. Let's get into it. I'm done yapping. So I have my tablet and what we want to do is play around with how much zoom and or not zoom we're doing. So I'm going to zoom out to right here and just kind of play around with, does that feel comfortable for you? Now I have that selected. So I should be able to just come on over, plop that down. Now, if I grab both of these, so if I just click my join tool, I can just go right on over and then that'll automatically join. So that is a tool that I think is super, super cool. Again, I have moved my shortcut to J. If you like that idea, and I'll do some more of them so you guys can see it, is I'm just gonna say, where are my lines gonna go? That is nice and smooth. Let's just see if it does our little re-edit, yay or nay, to get things nice and smooth. And I think there's going to be some little lines here. I am looking at my little smudge. And I think that's going to come right on up. So I'm just zooming in. And again, we are going pretty, not necessarily quick here, but like the idea is with the pencil tool, we are doing another kind of glorified tracing. And so it's all about how zoomed in you want to be. Now notice that we said the we didn't keep those selected. So I am getting separate little segments. So it's a so joining is a separate step. So if I click on J, and now I can just come in and, and go right over that rather than right clicking join any of those things. So it is a pretty fun little tool. The only little trick you need to do, I have to select it first, and then I'm just going right over that little corner, and then it's it's pretty haphazard. So like you could be pretty far away and it will grab it for you. So, so I am just going right on through. We're just getting these down. And notice as I am doing this, there's kind of a, a little bit of a thought process of getting those lines down first, especially with the pencil. Like it is a very, very quick tool. So I don't want you guys to necessarily stress too much about it. Also notice that I can be pretty haphazard since I have that smoothing tolerance and that fidelity setting pretty high. So I like the idea that I can just go pretty quick here and then it's going to smooth out and do a lot of the kind of heavy lifting so it doesn't have to worry about the fact that I'm on multiple cups of coffee, but I'm just going nice and smooth. Let's just do a little loop back in. And you might not have all of these little lines. So what makes sense to you? You're just kind of getting them down. I'm just looking for, maybe there's some other little creases up at the top. Every time I'm moving the artboard, this is me just clicking on my space bar and then I'm able to move it. Let's move into our little diaper. Let's move into the cone. I'm still gonna do quite a bit with our little pencil tool. Just getting my little creases in here. I'm just seeing what else I would like with the crease and then everything else is gonna move to segments and pen tool. All right, so I'm gonna go control zero. I'm just determining what I think is gonna be pencil. What is, so this is pretty loose. So I know this is really flowy. So that was my determinant. That's why I would be picking my pencil tool. Everything else is pretty straight. So I don't want to deal with straight lines in the pencil. So like that would be something that would not make my life very easy right now. So what I want to do is come over to my pen. You could also do segment. Either one of those would be fine. And I'm just kind of looking at where I think that angle is for the cone. I am going to make the cone a tiny bit wider. 
So I'm going to drop it a tiny bit. I am going to use my rounded corners little wi widget. And I think that right in here is where I want my... So I'm just doing a little assessment. So I'm going to click on here, and I'm just going to round out that bottom a tiny bit. Napkin. I've been calling it a diaper because that's what I think it is. A little ice cream diaper. So I'm clicking. Every time you click on a line, just double check, especially if you are dealing with the pen, that it is not selected. I'm going to click on Shift C, and I'm just going to round that out. I'm going to take that little point, and I just want this one to just kind of point and hint that that's what's happening. Another one with the pen tool. I'm going to click. I'm going to go a little bit long. And I think I'll just hide that one right there. So Shift C is our anchor tool. I go through this one quite frequently. So under our pen tool, if you drop down, there is our anchor tool. And then I am going to start moving into our segment. So segment, just drag it out. I'm going to go Shift C, just plop it right into place. And I think we're going to do most of the cone with that process as well. I'm just looking at this little last bit of the napkin. I am going to simplify that a tiny bit. So in my head, this is wrapping up and I might even just take this one. So it's going to wrap up doing shift C again. So this is going behind, by the way, this is just so I understand what I'm actually building. Just so those things line up. So it's going behind and then it's going to wrap on through. So I'll get, I'm going to click here. That's going to connect it. I'm just going to click and drag. I think I'm just going to go shift C for right now on that one. Notice that it reset that, that little anchor. So when I come back with my pen tool, I can just hold shift and then just drop it right on down. Reasons I am doing that is so I can come in and use my snap to point and then it's not going to try and connect and or delete. This, this first phase is just getting our lines down. We can always edit. I don't want you guys stressing out of trying to get everything perfect the first time. And then I'm going to go on my artboard and I just want to see how close to the middle we are. So I'm just going to eyeball it. So there's one. Again, I'm just doing segment. And I am simplifying it from the actual photo. And let's actually do that. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to click on my add anchor. So I'm on my anchor tool and I'm just dragging that out until I get. So I'm going to hold down my alt option. And then I'm just dragging that down. So I'm going to grab each one of those. I don't want all of them. Some of these are going to delete as they, they move over. I'm going to come over to my align. Anytime I'm over here on this right hand side, just understand that that's under window. So I can click on align. So rather than coming over here and waiting for your toolbar, little pop-ups to figure out what the icons are, you can always just come over, click on align. And then what I want to do is, and then I just want to distribute right there. So that'll just kind of even those things out if there was any, if they weren't exact. So that is our build layer. I am just going to duplicate that out. So I'm going to select this layer. I am going to duplicate out that layer. We are now going to be dealing with our variation. And then the very next step, we are going to be coming through and doing all of the cleanup. Crank it along here. So this is what we want to do. I want to duplicate out this layer. So notice it says ice cream. I want to duplicate that out. So I'm locking out that layer and then I'm going to hide it. So that's our ugly one. We have everything pretty well done. I think I want to expand everything. So we're going to do this twice. So just notice that when I say expand, a lot of the times I'm meaning going all the way through expanding all of our lines. So since we have added on with profiles, we want to expand the appearance. Notice that some of these lines that we did not add it any effects to are still in stroke form. So that's kind of what you're eyeballing meaning we're going to have to do it again. So whenever I say expand, that means you're going to have to keep going through expand appearance until you get your nice little pop up. This is usually a good signal. Hey, I'm all the way through and then I'm going to click on OK. So again, as I am selecting, I am just looking to see if everything looks like that and there's not a stroke going through the middle. 
So let's zoom in. The more and more you guys are dealing with your own drawings, the more a lot of this messy stuff makes perfect sense. Like there's really not anything in here that I think is too overly complicated. I've already spent some time drawing it. I've already spent some time editing it. And so the more you do your own drawings, yes, it's a little bit of an extra step, but you're gonna really understand where everything is. So let's just do any of the overlapping up here in the, the cone. So notice that I'm selecting everything in the just the ice cream part. So when I zoom in, I am looking for any of this weird overlapping. I'm gonna come over and all you need to do is click on your shape builder. So as long as it's selected, just click on it. And then as I come over, and then everything is going to highlight. So since I'm going to be deleting most of this overlap, I'm gonna hold down my Alt option. I am using my mouse right now. And then all I need to do is start peeking for any of our weird overlapping that took place. I can zoom in by the way. So every time I zoom in, just double check, you might need to really zoom in and see if there's any little strays. A lot of the times with that ugly phase, I'm really going long and that's to prevent these little tiny guys because that's where it gets a little bit more frustrating. So I'm going to keep zooming in, zooming out. Also be aware that if you're doing all of it and it gets too overwhelming, you can always just do one little segment at a time, see what makes sense. And so I want this all to just kind of come through. There's that nice little taper. So I'm kind of looking for like birds, if you want to call it that. That looks okay to me. So notice that, that there's that little tiny stray. So I'm holding down my Alt and my Option and I can either click on it and or I can just drag all the way through. So I'm still holding on to my Alt Option as I am dragging through things. Other little thing just to point out is if you are zoomed in and you're ever confused on what you're deleting, you can zoom out and just see, hey, is this reading the way I want it to? So hold down your Alt option. All right, so we are done editing. It looks like the, the ice cream part, for the most part, and how I would like it looks pretty clean. I might mess around with that up here. But now let's start going through our little cone. Now, if I click on this, if I did anything with Shape Builder, do you guys see these little corners? Let me just zoom in so you can see it. See how this, there's this little crisscross? All I want to do is come into Pathfinder. If you don't have Pathfinder, just come under Window, drop down to Pathfinder, and then I'm going to Unite it, and then that's going to kind of fill everything in. So if you ever see those little corners, if they're fighting you, just fill them in. So I'm going to grab these two first. I'm clicking on my Shape Builder. Now I have a nice little edge over here and I'll zoom out see if this makes a little bit more sense okay so that looks pretty good to me I'm gonna go file save we just finished up that little step and again every time you're looking at your drawing and you're doing some editing here's kind of your thought process what do I want in front there it does get a little bit over complicated for a quick second and then just go bit by bit so all you're looking for is hey what do I need? I can always come back and bring in the actual drawing. Like, hey, what did I have in front? What did I have behind? So you can always look at that. And again, you can always look at your resource. So we do have the actual photo as well. So let's do this. I am ready to go for the coloring aspect. All right, so I'm gonna go Control A. I might even do this. I might even duplicate this one out. A lot of times this one, since we, we came through and notice how we cleaned everything up, but everything's still separate. Sometimes if I like editing, this is the one I come back to since I've already done a lot of the cleanup and then I don't have to have my eyes explode going back to the, the messy one. So just be aware that I do like having that one as a duplicate. I am in a, a big, big fan and believer of, hey, duplicate each step and then you can always go back. So I'm gonna grab this one and this one we're grabbing all of our darks, everything that's on that layer. I'm coming over to our Pathfinder and then I'm just coming in and I'm clicking on Unite. So that will unite out all of our darks. I am ready to color at this point in time. And I believe I am using our little piggy. I believe we also use this for our uh, cupcake. So if you see cupcake challenge, that is the same one as well. 
So I am going to grab everything. Most of this is all enclosed. So decision making as you are moving forward with coloring is I'm looking to see if there's, if everything's pretty well enclosed. I don't have a bunch of gaps. So it should be screaming to you. We should be using live paint. So I'm going to come in live paint. I'm going to click on make. I'm going to see these little little corner or those little asterisks that's going to let you know that you're in live paint. Also just be aware that live paint is under shape builder. So it's going to all feel very similar. It's going to highlight the same way. If you ever did live paint selection, I don't necessarily ever use that because I like the live paint bucket a little bit, a little better. But let's say we are going to do just kind of a base. Let's just fill in all of those. And you might be able to see that the gaps are filling in. So that's what these little red lines are. That's considered a gap. I think we'll do, oh, let's just do kind of a cream down here. I might modify that color a little bit, but I think that's okay. And then for our cone, let's just kind of do a, a base. I am digging that a whole lot, so let's expand. So no, notice the little step after we do a live paint bucket. Notice we still have those little asterisks, and right at the top, it's screaming at you, hey, you should expand this. So I'm going to click on expand. The other little thing to always just be aware of, all of that is a group. So I'm going to click on ungroup. I'm going to click on ungroup until I can come back and grab each individual color. So this is all good where I want it. I'm going to duplicate this one. This is just an extra little step. This is just so I can get a little bit of a silhouette. So I'm going to grab all of my flat color right now. That includes all of these strokes. I'm going to come into my Pathfinder and then I'm just going to unite it. If I ever see any little random strays, I'm just using my blob brush. Just filling those in. And let's just fill that with kind of just a simple base color. And then what I want to do is I want to come up to the top and go Object. I'm going to drop down to where it says Path. I'm going to do an Offset Path. And the decision on this is notice that everything is already expanded. So I, I don't necessarily want to keep doing strokes and then have to remember strokes. So this one's just kind of a, a nice user-friendly way of adding on an extra little layer. It's going to give us that sticker look. I want this to be round. So I'm just previewing. Is that the how fat I want it? I might just go one and see if that's pretty close to what I want. I'm going to click on OK. All right, so I'm going to leave this outside cream and let's just get a little bit fancy. So right now I'm able to select. If for any reason it's grabbing both of them, you just have to ungroup. So I notice that I'm just grabbing this inside. This one is not selecting. So if everything is selecting, just remember to ungroup. And then what I want to do is I want to get, we're going to get fancy. So we're going to add on maybe a one point. Let's just test out two. And then I want that to go on the outside. And then I want that to be white. So we're getting really fancy with kind of that, that outside shape. So this inside color really doesn't matter. And I'll just expand it for right now. So let's just go object expand appearance. And that'll expand. So notice that is no longer a stroke. If you still want to edit it later, then you can always keep that, keep that live. So I'm going to lock out that one. We are now dealing with the layer above so we can see it and uh, save up. So I would go file, save, and you guys are good to go. Thanks for hanging out. I always appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next Adobe Illustrator tutorial.